Hey guys, this is Haley, and in today's video, I thought it might be interesting to see how I run my infusions, just kind of like how I set it up and things like that. So I'm just gonna jump right into the video. The first thing I do is I go and wash my hands. Actually, I'll probably put my hair up first and then wash my hands. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Oh, <sighs> okay, so my hair looks horrible. Don't mind it. Um, I hate putting my hair up, so I only put it up for like 30 minutes while I do this. Actually, it probably doesn't take 30 minutes. I've never timed myself. Um, so yeah, I'm really bad at doing hair, but this is what it's like. <laughs> and first thing I'm gonna do, like always, is I'm just using these Clorox wipes. They're off brand. Um, I, this is why I do it, because he, <laughs> get down. You're gonna get out of here, okay? Come here, wanna get out? Okay, there we go, <laughs> let the cat out and just wipe down the surface that I'm going to be using. So the first things we need are everything that I need for my infusions. So I'll need a saline flush to check for blood return before I hook up my fluids. I will also need a tubing for the fluids. I will need my gloves, which I'm actually just gonna take the whole container out. Oh my word, this hair is awful. Cannot believe I'm posting this on the internet. Um, this is my alcohol swabs. Um, that's all I need from there. I'm also gonna need a bag of fluids, obviously, because this is what I run for my infusions. Uh, it's just a bag of normal saline. Um, and I believe that's it. If I forgot anything, I will get it along the way. So, first step is to put hand sanitizer on. Even though I washed my hands, I was touching things and it's just an extra precaution that you need to take when you're dealing with central lines. Actually, technically, I should pull this down before I finish using the hand sanitizer. So, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more. There we go. I just like to do that so I'm not like touching things after I sanitize my hands. All right, next I'm gonna take my gloves and put them on. Next step is I'm going to open the tubing. All right, so I'm gonna take that out, set it up on top of there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bag of fluids. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the crinkling. I'll try not to talk while I'm crinkling the bag. There we go. So now the next step is I'm actually gonna take this paper thing. It just holds the tubing together. I'm just gonna take that off. Next you take the bag of fluids and with mine it has this little blue tip here and I'm just gonna pull that off like that. Then I'm gonna take the end of the tubing, which is this thing, take off the cap and stick it in. And then you just push down until it is in all the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it. So the tubing just has this little clamp on here. I know it's not like super close up, so kind of an informal instructions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp that and then flip this upside down or right side up, I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm gonna squeeze the chamber and then some fluid goes into the chamber when you do that. So I'm gonna squeeze it again. And then it's about half full. And that's what I want. There we go. Next, I'm gonna bring my IV pole over here and hang the fluids on it. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take the tubing in my hand. So I have a little dish here. It's not a sterile dish, so I'm not gonna be touching it to the end of this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cap off, set the cap down, unclamp the tubing, and my um, infusion is running full wide open right now, so it is running pretty fast. So I'm just priming the tubing here, which basically means getting all the air out. Like not all of these air bubbles are a huge deal, but it's not that much fluid loss for me. So hang it up on the 
thing here. I'm actually going to alcohol swab this cap just in case it touched anything. Can you guys even see me behind the IV pole? <laughs> So my tubing is primed, so I'm just going to put that over there. Now I have to flush my port, or I do not have a port, flush my pig. So on my extension tubing, I just have some clips. This one's already unclipped, probably because when we did, um, I just had a dressing change like an hour ago, we probably didn't clip clamp that. Uh, but this one's clamped, and then this also protects from air getting in, so I'm just going to unclamp that. And I'm going to go ahead and prime this so this is the saline flush you need to flush your line before you use it to check for blood return you pull back like this to get the air in and then you push all the air out Ooh. then because i kept the cap upside down i can put it back on set this down then i'm going to take the saw cap off of the end of the line and I'm gonna take an alcohol swab. So you just take it, twist it, then just let it air dry for a little bit. Then you're gonna take your saline flush and you're gonna put it on the end of the clave connector. So now for this part, I'm gonna stand a little closer to the camera so you can see. So. This is the saline flush and how you check for blood return is you take the the syringe and you pull backwards instead of pushing down so i'm just going to go ahead and do that as you can see the line here has blood in it and that is what we're looking for if you can't get blood return that means that you have a clot in your line and if you have a clot in your line you have to go to the hospital and either try to get the clot out or they're gonna have to pull your line, which is not good. So that's why I check for blood return every single day. I have to do it every single day because I don't have a higher dose of heparin, but some people do it like every three days. So I flushed with the saline. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab my tubing. I'm gonna take this cap off the end of the tubing and I'm actually gonna run a tiny bit more fluid out just because there's probably some air at the end of here, and I just don't want that air getting in my line. Take this off. Drop that. Connect. There we go. Oh, there's a little bubble here. I'm going to get that out. So if there's like a bubble here, I'm just going to flick it. It's either going to travel back up, and I believe this has an air filter in it, so the bubbles just kind of disappear when you do that. So yeah, anyways, yeah, because I don't have a pump, I have this little dial thing, which I don't know it's gonna focus on. Um, but basically this dial is controlling the flow rate. So you can only make it as high as um, 250 milliliters an hour, which basically if it did run exactly 250 milliliters an hour, that would mean it would take about four hours for this bag to completely go into the body. Um, however, this isn't science, it's not exact. Um, it also depends how high your IV pole is and um, just like other variations as well. So I started out at 250. Um, sometimes I leave it at 250 the whole time and just run it over four hours. Otherwise, you can actually um, go past the 250, and even though it doesn't have numbers there, sometimes you can put it between 250 and wide open. So anyways, I'm gonna leave mine at 250 for now. Now I'm going to make sure all my clamps are unclamped. So this is unclamped, this is unclamped, and then this one is clamped, but I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp it. Once I raise the IV pole, I'll raise it a little bit so you guys can see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp this and you'll see it starting to drip here. Okay, I'm not sure where it cut out, but basically I just throw everything away. And yeah, that's basically it. I just kind of like hang out and chill while the rest of the infusion goes. I'm gonna take my hair out because I hate having my hair up. <laughs> it looks so crazy. Um, but yeah, that is basically it. <laughs> um, I will come back and show you how I disconnect from fluids and how I, um, 
flush the line with heparin at night. Oh, and if you're wondering what I do while I have my fluids running, I basically just watch TV. Um, some people, you know, might want to like walk around and do things while their fluids are going. I personally don't. I just use it as a time to relax. Um, fluids tend to make me drowsy, uh, but then the next day they give me energy. It's a little bit weird. Everyone reacts differently to them. Some people are completely unfazed by getting fluids. Um, but for me, it does make me a little bit tired, so I just like to hang out, chill out, do whatever. Okay. Mm. All right, done with my infusion. What time is it? 7.50, I think I started at like four, about four hours, so. All right, take my sweatshirt off. So first step to being done with all this. Um, I'm gonna grab all the supplies I need. Step one, I'm gonna actually open this real fast, but then I'm gonna go ahead and put on my hand sanitizer. Cause you know, need to, oh, I need to go fast, my camera's dying. All right, hand sanitizer on. Hopefully that didn't just hit the lens. Okay, got that. Next, gloves on. On. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our heparin and prep that. So take the cap off, put it upside down or right side up, whatever. Pull back and get the air out. Go ahead and put the cover back on. Place that down. Then we're gonna go ahead and unclamp this because I had clamped it. Take the tubing off of the clave connector. Then take your heparin, stick it on the end. Twist. Make sure your clamps are open. And then push, pause, push, pause, push, pause, push, pause. That just helps break up any blood clots if they're starting to form. And heparin is an anti-clotting medication, so. Push it all in, just like that. Then I'm gonna take my Kuros cap, take it off, and untwist my heparin, and put the Kuros cap on. Then I'm going to go ahead and clamp my line. So I have a clamp here, and a clamp on the pick. Then I'm gonna take my gloves off. Then I'm going to get my pick line cover. This is the pick line cover from Mighty Well. I will leave the link in the description as well as my uh, discount code. Um, come on. I always wrap it around like twice because I feel like it stays better. And then you pull the Mighty Well cover over the top, just like that. And then for this, honestly, all you have to do, can't even see it. <laughs> there we go. This goes right in the trash, so it's not that big of a deal. And then everything else on the counter goes in the trash or back in the drawer. So yeah, that's basically it on how I do my infusions. Um, keep in mind, I am very new at this. This is probably my the start of my third week doing it, so I'm by no means an expert or anything, but I thought it might be interesting to see how I do things uh, because I know a lot of you guys probably have no idea how to do um, infusions, um, just like I did it before I was taught. But yeah, that's basically it. It's pretty simple. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this really informal video, but hope you found it interesting. Leave a comment down below if you guys have any more questions or any video requests. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more videos about my pick line or pots or any of my other illnesses that I talk about here on my channel. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon on a new video. Bye.